fall is upon us. The first public forum topic from the summer is almost over, and the November topic is rapidly approaching on the pumpkin spice winds of autumn. Unfortunately, that November topic, which lost the majority of the vote and the student vote, happens to be resolved in response to the current crisis, a government should prioritize the humanitarian needs of refugees over its national interests. This is a topic that sounds like it was developed by committee because it was. There's a lot of different words inserted into this topic and a lot of different ideas inserted in that kind of work at cross purposes, and one of the unfortunate end results of that is that each team has one tautology they can collapse down on. One side can define the topic in such a way, and be correct in doing so, as to make it non-debatable. The other side could define the topic in such a way that if it were to be debatable, they would win every time. So, at that point, this is one of those topics where the debates will be better if both teams choose to debate the spirit of the topic rather than the actual topic. But if either team wants to debate the actual topic, there's really not much of anything the other team can do to stop them. So we're going to look at the wording, look at some of the big ideas, look at what that means for both sides, and look at some of the more common arguments, starting with the wording at the beginning of the resolution. So, in response to limits the larger scope of national interests. It's Khan's main answer to the pro-tautology, that national interests are defined as what governments believe they should prioritize. So Khan can argue that national interests come first in most cases, but not in response to this particular crisis. And speaking of the crisis, the resolution would be pretty LD-ish, except for adding in the current crisis. It seems like it was added to prevent an abstract value debate that the other half of the resolution pretty much mandates anyway, because we don't know which crisis and we don't know which nation or nations. So this way, it's specifically vague instead of vaguely specific. The current crisis is interesting because what it does is you have to know what the current crisis is, really, to know how much accepting refugees would harm national interests, or even to know whether the two trade off at all, and what the current crisis is probably varies by a nation. So the resolution could say Syrian civil war, it doesn't. It could say the post-Arab Spring refugee crisis, it doesn't. It could say the EU migrant crisis, it doesn't. In the EU migrant crisis, Syrians are the plurality, but not the majority of the Middle Eastern and North African refugees currently in the EU. Most of those refugees are in nearby countries, in particular Lebanon. So aside from that crisis, current crisis could also refer to refugees fleeing conflict and habitat destruction, Oceania to Australia, fleeing civil war in the DRC from pretty much anywhere else near Congo, fleeing anti-immigrant violence in the Dominican Republic back to Haiti, after the parents fled from Haiti to the Dominican Republic, fleeing narco-terrorism in Colombia to Venezuela and Panama, fleeing radical Islamic groups in Mali to surrounding countries, fleeing drug-related paramilitary violence in Mexico to the USA, with the USA incentivizing Mexico to keep the Central American and South American refugees on their side of the border, refugees fleeing Russian-backed militias and terrorism in the Caucasus to Europe, refugees fleeing occupation and terrorism in Kashmir to India, it could mean refugees fleeing famine and genocide in South Sudan to Kenya, or fleeing from Boko Haram and opposing counterinsurgency forces in Nigeria to Chad and Cameroon, it might mean refugees fleeing warlords and famine in Afghanistan to Iran and Pakistan. Then again, the current crisis could mean the inability to supply adequate resources for the influx in refugees. This has the benefit of not tying it to any one particular source of refugees and creating a real when-in-conflict kind of scenario that delineates an actual conflict of interest, where even if it might be in a nation's interest to help refugees in general, the current crisis is the overflow and is the inability to provide for them without sacrificing. And that might lead to a little bit more clash if you look at it that way. Alternatively, the current crisis could just be inserted in the resolution 
to hedge against some of these conflicts getting resolved or some new crisis emerging between now and Thanksgiving to try and keep the topic current no matter what the crisis ends up being. Which would be a very lazy solution to topic writing, but certainly is a possible interpretation of the topic. All right, let's look at a government. Do teams have the ability to specify this? Would that be parametricizing the resolution or would that be looking at a plan? It probably depends on the warrant for why you picked the government or governments that you did. It could be interpreted as, on balance, the majority of governments. It could be interpreted as a hypothetical just government. So we're not talking about what a government's national interests actually are, but what the national interests ought to be. It could be talking about just any government or all governments, or it could be talking about a representative democratic government, and each of these can be warranted in their own ways. Possibly it's just there to circumvent teams arguing about collective action problems, ideas about the tragedy of the commons, where a team might say, well, yes, it's in the international interest for every nation to take in refugees, but it might not be in any one nation's national interest to be the one to take in the most refugees and to pick up the slack for other countries. This takes us to prioritize. And unfortunately, a depressing number of debates on this topic are going to come down to a team's definition of prioritize. Does prioritize mean to do first? Does it mean to do most? Does it imply that the two things have to be in conflict? The trouble with having the word prioritize in the resolution is it kind of forces the pro team to assume xenophobia as factual truth. When pro argues that we should prioritize refugees above national interests, Pro has to prove both that refugees are harmful to national interests and that we should take them anyway. The moment Pro makes an offensive argument or a turn that says that refugees are good or it is in our national interest to take in refugees, they are no longer prioritizing them over national interests. They are a part of national interests. And at that point, Pro has made the resolution not really debatable for them. So it puts Pro in kind of a weird situation. You have to argue that refugees are bad for the country, but that we have some kind of obligation that we should take them in anyway, and that with a nation as the actor, that actor should act against its own interests and prioritize something against them that trades off with them. Now, the easiest way around this is to talk about prioritize as a question of ordering, but again, Khan does not have to let Pro do this but Pro probably can show that doing so makes for a more debatable interpretation of the topic in which the better team will win, whereas debating the topic as literally stated isn't really going to lead to the best clash or necessarily the best team's clearing at the end of the tournament. So let's look at refugees. Refugees are a subset of asylum seekers. Countries have made a decision once they grant asylum seekers refugee status. Giving refugee status to asylum seekers is functionally admitting to a national, or perhaps a governmental but not a populist, interest in humanitarian assistance, at least if they are refugees. Now, the UN High Commission on Refugees deals with a lot of people who aren't refugees by their 1951 definition, which also predates climate refugees. So when we're looking at this, the question is refugees in the eyes of who? In their own eyes, in the eyes of the media, in the eyes of the UN, or in the eyes of a nation? Now, the easiest answer is the resolution is from the perspective of a nation, so we should go ahead and talk about what a nation would consider refugees. The trouble is that's also the least debatable definition because if a nation considers them refugees, it has said that prioritizing their humanitarian needs is in its national priorities, is part of its interests. So at that point, it's kind of hard to actually clash on that. It might be better to just use the UN definition. 
The UN definition predates climate refugees. The UN definition doesn't include internally displaced persons. It means that there's some objective body, as in third party, not as in completely neutral, deciding whether or not we can count them as refugees or otherwise, and it gives a classification that's not directly tied to whether it's in interest to take them in. That said, this is going to tie back into the idea of what the current crisis is. And teams can try and exclude groups just by saying, well, this isn't part of the current crisis the resolution is talking about because these people aren't technically refugees. Again, though, the trouble is in the eyes of who. For instance, Al Jazeera was probably the first major international media organization to call people fleeing from Syria and surrounding countries refugees when they entered Europe. Most European media up until that point was calling them migrants. Now the split is more even. There's a lot of different terms being thrown around. Either way, the important thing is to remember that these are people that we are talking about and that the language that we use should reflect that. There's a lot of sources which sound great for either side because they're really strongly worded, but at the same time are going to talk about, like, a swarm of unwanted mouths, and that's the British Prime Minister, all the way down to, well, the kind of topics that the worst con teams are running on September-October. Those sources will also have something awful to say about this topic as well, but when in doubt, call them people. So when we're looking at this kind of national interests, we are looking at humanitarian needs as well. We talked about refugees before talking about humanitarian needs because defining refugees is important to that, but I want to step back a couple words and talk about humanitarian needs. Now, humanitarian needs are a pretty broad spectrum. They include but are not limited to asylum. In many cases, these are basic, easily affordable needs. We are talking about food, we are talking about water, we are talking about electricity, we are talking about shelter. These are things that pretty much any country can provide, and that if all countries provided equally, wouldn't really be a problem for any one country to provide. In the status quo, merely providing baseline humanitarian needs is a big stretch for Lebanon, whereas other countries are definitely able to support all the refugees they are willing to take in, and probably quite a few more, but are attempting to start small and then ramp up from there. Aside from that, when we are talking about national interests, the real question here is, do we mean the interests of the people, the government, or the country, and how do these differ? Because again, Pro has to argue against national interests, and they don't want to argue against all three. They want to define it as one of the three and argue that it is in the interests of the other two, even if it is against either publicly stated national interest or against popular sentiment. So in either of those situations, Khan can argue for the other side or can simply try and define national interest in the other way, which is part of why I said that if a team wants to force you to debate the actual topic, there's really no way out of a definition debate. Really, a lot of this just comes down to not whether or not refugees are in the national interest, but whether or not you have an obligation to take in refugees even when they could conflict with your national interest. Now again, that's not the actual wording of the topic, but that's what a lot of teams are going to end up debating just because otherwise there's not too much to clash on besides definitions. Most of the drawbacks depend on what the current crisis is. It's not a blanket statement that you should always take in refugees, no matter how harmful they are to your national interests. It's not a blanket statement that national interests should always come before refugees. It's a question of, in the current crisis, does the current crisis's mix of harms and benefits mean that we should prioritize our national interests 
over humanitarian needs of people who we have said we have a national interest in prioritizing humanitarian needs of. So even that's kind of messy. But really, without looking at national interest and without looking at refugees, it's kind of hard to decide what are we actually debating about here. If the question is, should European countries take in more refugees from the Middle East and North Africa than they are, that's fairly debatable. That's what a lot of cards will be about. At the same time, getting caught up in the minutiae can sometimes be harmful. For instance, it might not really matter what the current crisis is. If climate refugees are the current crisis, as opposed to Syrian refugees, because there are more A governments that have to deal with those, or because it is an increasing rather than a decreasing crisis, or because it is a root cause of a lot of other refugee crises, in any of those cases, most of those won't change what the actual arguments for accepting versus rejecting refugees are. As a matter of fact, if you are doing that, you're probably making arguments primarily about the refugee's national origin, which usually translates to, but they're from countries that have ISIS, so we can't trust them, which is not really the strongest argument to be making anyway, and just empirically has not been a concern of the countries choosing to take in refugees. Khan is in a pretty solid position in this debate, because if pro gets overly ambitious, the Khan team can just take the pro case for themselves. Pro has a really delicate balancing act to do on this topic, where they show that this is bad, but we should probably do it anyway because it is the right thing to do. This means that some pro teams are going to try and collapse down on just straight deontology, or the idea that national interests aren't something that really matter, and that they're not the same thing as what a nation should prioritize, but more what a nation is prioritizing and probably oughtn't. Con teams can go either way and probably want to be fairly flexible in what their cases are and what they choose to concede or turn in their rebuttal speech. If you are pro on this topic, you probably want to speak second so that you can decide after you hear the con case, well, can we get away with arguing that refugees are good, or do we have to argue that they are against our national interests to take in, and that we should do it anyway? Overall, the way this topic is set up, the combination of what refugees are defined as, what it means to prioritize, what national interests actually are, and what counts as the current crisis really decide what the arguments on the topic are going to be. The general spirit of the topic remains, should the countries, particularly neighboring the Middle East and in Europe, that are taking in a lot of refugees right now, keep taking in refugees, or should they not do it since it is against their national interests? Not if, but since, and again, that concept of prioritize kind of changes the topic. This also means that most economic data, most statistics, most arguments like that that try to prove whether or not refugees are good or bad are unfortunately beside the point of this resolution. We don't really care whether or not they are helpful or harmful, we care about, since they are harmful, should we do this anyway? And what that means is that one side wants to have a values debate, and the other side is fine with having a stats debate, and generally speaking, especially in front of lay judges, whichever team is able to have both, is willing to meet the other team in the middle, is willing to show they can win both debates, is probably going to come out ahead, but overall on this topic, I'd probably just rather be con the majority of the time, even if it means I always have to speak first. Pro's just kind of caught in a bad place in this topic. They do have one definitional collapse they can use, but it is so blatantly abusive, even if it is literal wording of the resolution, that very few judges will actually buy it, and it will look like they are trying to not have a debate. 
Khan has a collapse that it looks like Pro is asking for, and that they can spin as a flaw in the Pro case. And even though it's just as mandated by the topic and just as much of a problem for the other team, it doesn't seem as sketchy to judges, and it seems like Pro has a way out of it, but that they would have to curtail their own offense significantly to take it. So for this topic, I think that Sai is probably more important than speaking order, and I think that if you are stuck Pro, you should make sure that you go second. If you are debating this topic under CFL rules, where Pro always has to go first, I'm sorry, good luck. There's really not a whole ton you can do except invite the other team to debate the spirit of the topic and make it sound like they're trying to do something else when they debate the actual topic. If you have questions about specific contentions, by all means, leave them in the comments or message me, and I will try and get back to you on those. If there are enough to do a follow-up, I will do a follow-up. Otherwise, I will see you at the end of November, what, sorry, at the end of October, when we discuss the December topic. Best of luck on this topic. Catch you then.